Hello and welcome to this video in which I'm building the Lancaster B2 from Airfix in 1 72nd scale. If you enjoy the video and find it useful, please remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more build videos and new projects. You can even find a link below to buy me a cup of coffee if you should wish. The Lancaster was an aspirational kit when I was young. I remember it costs 10 shillings and sixpence at the time. That's 52 and a half pence in decimal currency. And that was sixpence more than the allowance I was given for my Christmas present. Although they did bend the rules in the end. It was made in black plastic and it came in 76 parts. The kit I'm building here comes from a 2012 tooling with new parts in 2013 and was reboxed in 2020. It now has 239 parts and is rated at skill level 3, so it's for the more experienced modeler. It also comes with three flying hours if you collect them. Let's have a look at what's in the box. Okay, let's open up and see what we have here. Lovely box art, as usual, from Airfix these days. Very, very pretty. And we have a set of instructions. More of that in a while. And we have all the plastic parts. There are a lot of these, an awful lot of these. Let's have a quick nose and see what we have here. There's... Um, the main sprues, I guess, are fuselage sides. Um, these are the lower surfaces of the wings here. Um, elevators, ailerons, rudders, and so on, wheels. The other piece here is the other side of the fuselage, upper surfaces, Bombay components, and so on. Then we have the bits that are different for this kit. It's essentially this sprue here, which is all the parts for the engines because this has Bristol Hercules engines instead of Merlin's so this is why it's a B2 not a B1 or a B3 there's all the undercarriage parts Bombay accessories and so on and so forth here and then some more structural bits and pieces flaps can be up or down which is a very nice touch and parts of the cockpit and things like that oh, and the guns okay also we have a huge huge bag of uh, transparent parts there's a lot of glazing on a Lancaster as you will know if you've seen PA474 flying lots and lots to do lots and lots of bits to mask off later side windows all sorts of things um, but it's good it looks good um, lots to play with though okay so have a quick look at the instructions now um, what comes in here is a big sheet of decals. Have a look at those in a while. The two color schemes that are available for this model in here. This is for uh, Z Zombie from 408 Squadron, Royal Canadian Air Force in 1944. And this one is Fanny Firkin 2. Excellent. Uh, 514 Squadron, a three group in 1944. This is one I'll be building. You'll notice um, here, by the way, the extra gun position, which is quite unusual, and that's the reason why I'm making this particular one. The decal sheet is well printed, sharply defined, and has rich colours. At the top are the common decals, such as the instruments, maps for the navigator, roundels and fin flashes, and all the stencils, of which there are mercifully relatively few. Below these are the markings for the 408 Squadron aircraft, and at the very bottom are the markings for the 514 Squadron aircraft, which is what I'm building today. OK, the instructions themselves, as is now usual with Airfix, they're actually very well drawn. Very clear, very straightforward, you know, this goes into that. It, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, I can't think of anywhere in here that causes any problems. We're not going to follow exactly um, the build order, they say, because now and again we're going to be, say, fitting parts before the final fit so that we can just spray the colours on or we'll be delaying things or pre-fitting or pre-building. But we'll, we'll talk through it as we go, OK? Um, yeah, excellent set of instructions. Getting really excited about building this kit. As usual, the first steps for me are to wash all the parts in a gentle detergent solution, rinse and dry, 
Then apply a thin coat of spray primer to all the bits and pieces. With the primer dry, I'm spraying the flap housing on the top of the inner engine bays inside with an interior green colour. Now I use a Vallejo IDF green for this. I use the same colour inside the fuselage. On to construction at last, and the first parts to be assembled form the pilot seat. These go together, then sit on a cockpit floor section. When these are all dry, I'll paint the seat with leather and the headrest and interior green, then the frame, base and cockpit in black. I'll also add some shading to these, thickish shading, as this needs to be visible through the cockpit windows. There's a small decal that fits here, I guess it's to represent the headrest. And the cockpit area is completed with the control column. Some more decals now, and these are the instruments, and they get applied to the instrument panels that I've pre-painted in black. The decals seem to kind of drape over the plastic, so we need a lot of solvents such as microsol to help them conform properly. Once the decals dry, I can attach the rudder pedals to the back of the instrument panel, then place these onto the cockpit floor. One thing I would say is that the floor part had a significant bend in it, which needed correcting. Now while all of those are setting together, I'll add the front and rear bulkheads to the Bombay roof, and this part is also the interior floor, and all of that has been pre-painted in black. The spars have been painted interior green and black and can have some detail picked out. This will be inside the undercarriage bay. The spars can then be set in place perpendicular to the floor section. The completed cockpit area is then attached to the front of the floor section. Now I'm picking up various bits and pieces of panel work in black against the interior green and I'm adding some weathering to pick out the structure of the fuselage walls. Again, quite a heavy weathering. I'm also going to pick out some of the structure inside the walls of the Bombay in aluminium. The next job is adding the side windows to the fuselage. Now these windows come in strips, but they're not all the same size or spacing, so follow the part numbers very carefully. Now when I was dry fitting the spars, I found that these holes needed some sanding to be large enough. There's a, a bit of flash and a bit of mismolding in the way. But that was done quite quickly and then the spars slide into the holes and the floor and port side of the fuselage get mated together. Now this little part at the front is the bomb site and it can go in now. There are some more decals now, one to represent maps on the navigators table and another for the radio equipment. There is also one for the engine instruments and that goes on a panel in the starboard side of the fuselage. Now the navigator's table has the radio panel added and then a bar supporting the navigator's chair. This small piece needs to be cut from the end panel of the table. I guess this is the H2S radar display which isn't fitted to this Mark II Lancaster. The end panel can then go into place. Then at last the whole assembly is fitted into the port side of the fuselage and I'll touch up the paint when it's all set up and dry. Back towards the tail now and I need to add this ring for the ventral turret that's fitted to this aircraft. Then I'm fitting the rear identification lights and I've painted the back of the plastic silver to make it look like there are reflectors. Next I can put the windows into the starboard side as well. Having strips like this means you can use just a few dabs of polystyrene cement to hold them without fear of crazing the glass from the vapours. And finally the flight engineer's stool goes into place pre-painted black and leather in the starboard side.
So now the big moment, joining the fuselage halves. The spars help loads with this. All I need to do is make sure everything slots into the right places. Then I tape it all up to set and leave it alone for a little while. Onto the wing sections and the first thing I've done now is to pre-paint the front and back walls of the undercarriage bays and then added some weathering to them. Next on each set of spars there are four formers that define the undercarriage bays and help set the spars in the right place. Now those really need to set up properly and dry so I'll get on with the engine nacelles. Now each nacelle comes in two halves and each has a carburetor air intake on top and an oil cooler underneath and each of these pieces has two parts. The outer engines are in simple nacelles, the inner engines have the undercarriage bays included. I do need to add the front bulkhead at this point which is also the firewall of the engine bay. Just so that I know what goes where, I've labelled each nacelle as it's been completed. And now that the formers have set up, I can add the rear bulkhead for the wheel wells to each side. I can finish prepping the wings by adding these ID lights. Again, I've backed them with silver paint to give the appearance of a reflector. And at last I can start assembling the wings. The upper surface goes on first and this gets glued to the spars and the undercarriage box. Then the lower surface slides into place. Again I'm using clamps and tape to hold everything together while it sets. While that's all going on I'll assemble the tailplanes. Now each of these comes in two pieces and there's an elevator that goes on the back of each as well. And here you can see how the designers have put these as interlocking parts so that the tailplanes sit flat when they're fitted to the fuselage. A really nice touch. They slide into place and sit together. Now you might need to give them a little bit of a push so that they sit correctly in the right place. Back to the wings now and the engine nacelles get attached. Now the inner nacelles slip over the undercarriage base structure to be fitted. The outer nacelles just stick straight to the underside of the wing. And finally, for the moment at least, I'm attaching the fairings to the underside of the inner flaps. Now these fairings will set the angle of the flaps in the lowered position later on. There are different fairings if you want the flaps retracted. Now, onto the transparencies. And I've got a packet of pre-cut kabuki paper to mask all of the glassware. There are two sheets of paper and lots of diagrams, but they're actually quite simple to follow. One thing I do suggest is to mark the top of each sheet so you can get the orientation to find mask elements when you need them. Oh, and I'm also putting brand new blade in my craft knife as many of these parts are really tiny. Then it's just a case of working from one end to the other, piece by tiny piece. All of the turret parts also get their own mask elements. Now I'm writing the part numbers of the turret on the mask so I know which bit is which later on. There are about 130 bits of paper for the glass on the sprue plus all the windows and lights I've already installed. So back now to the fuselage and I need to install this direction finding loop antenna as that will be inside the canopy when it's fitted. I'll also fit the fairing for the mid-upper turret. I can also start assembly of the base of the gun mounts for the turrets and paint them black. I'm also going to put together this unusual ventral turret. This is a Fraser Nash FN64 and it wasn't a success. The gunner had to aim through a periscope that had a very narrow field of view. So unless your target was quite cooperative, you were unlikely to actually hit it. It did require a special fairing between it and a reshaped bomb bay door. 
And uh, next up is uh, painting the top of the fuselage that fits inside the canopy and we're painting that in black paint. Then I can finish assembling the gun turrets. I'm using PVA glue here to prevent any chemical hazing of the plastic when it dries. There's also a fuselage fairing for the rear turret that has to be made. It just comes in two halves. The mounts for the mid upper turret has to be completed. The supports are already in black. The guns are in gun metal with top parts in black as well. The turret glassware slips over the guns and then the back half of the turret is glued on. White PVA glue again. A similar process is undertaken for the front gun turret as well. With the turrets drying, I'm attaching the navigator's dome to the back of the canopy section. I'm handling it using a small blob of blue tack on a cocktail stick that helps me put it in place and I can just push it down into seating. Then the large main canopy part can go into place, again set with PVA glue. I'll cover the dome with a liquid mask solution later on. On to the actual engines now, these Bristol Hercules. I'm going to paint the interior of the engine housings black before assembly and I'll do the same to these Ford engine mountings. The engines themselves have two banks of cylinders which I'm painting in gunmetal and the central structures are painted black. Each engine assembly comes in four parts. A shaft sits inside a bush. Now don't glue this into place if you want your propellers to turn later. Two banks of cylinders get glued together. Then the bush and shaft are glued to the front of the cylinder assembly. And then simply repeat three times. There are two ways to make the engine housings. The first is to join the two halves, then drop the front mount into place. There is a slot on that and a locator tab inside the housing, so you might need to poke around a bit to get the part to sit correctly. The other way is to put the front mounting in place on one half of the housing first, then add the other half. Now, to be honest, both ways seem to work equally well. My next job is to start painting the propellers. Now, I start off now by painting the tips white. The props are held on cocktail sticks to make them easier to handle. Then when the white is dry, I go over it in yellow. Now this is a high density yellow paint, but it still has very poor coverage. As you can see when I go over the primer as well. That is why I always put down white first. It makes the yellow really pop out. With those drying, I'll go back to the wings and attach the engines. Now there are tabs that means the engines can only go on in one orientation. Oh, and I'll add that rear turret fairing while I think of it too. Now I'm putting the mid upper turret on for painting because it picks up the camouflage colors. The other two turrets are plain black, so I can paint them off the model and add them later on. There's also this small panel to fit under the nose and then the bomb aimers blister goes on. All of these as usual with PVA glue. Now I can slip the engine housings over the engines and add the base of the exhaust elements as well. Now there's this top cover piece I'm just going to place on the aircraft because I want it on there for painting because I'm spraying the whole thing but I want to take it off later to fit the undercarriage. A small dab of PVA will keep it in place. And there's one of these panels for the front of each inner engine nacelle. Next I'll glue up the main wheels and let them set and paint them before I go back to the propellers. Now these get a coat of black with a gunmetal hub, although to be honest, I think the hub is gonna be pretty much hidden once we put these black spinners in place. With everything properly masked, the whole kit gets a coat of black primer and then a black paint on top. Once 
While that dries, I can give some guns to the rear turret after it's been painted. Next, the kit gets a coat of dark brown on the top and then some satin varnish, so I can mask it off again for the dark green to be added. With that done, I'll add another coat of satin varnish. Now I'm using a satin varnish to allow me to set the decals more easily. They slide better over the slightly shiny surface. And I'll use some Microsol to pick up the panel lines later on. Now remember those little bits on the top of the engine they cells? Well they're painted so I can take them off now as you have to put the main gear legs through in from the top. Now they take a little bit of finessing to get into place but once they're in place they sit very securely. I can then add the rest of the struts and actuators and braces to the gear. The exhausts have been painted in rust already on the sprue and they can be added to their sub-assembly on the engines now. Now I can fit the undercarriage doors. Now these have locator tabs on the nacelles and also a brace to attach to the main undercarriage legs. And I can also add the flaps at this point and here you can see how the fairing sets the angle of the flaps correctly. I've painted the wheels in tyre black and with black hubs and they just click into place on the undercarriage legs. At this point I can also add the tail wheel which I've assembled and painted off the aircraft. Inside the bomb bay I've added the bomb clips in aluminium and also the bomb bay door struts. And once those are in place, the huge bomb bay doors can go into place. And now that the undercarriage is set nicely, those small panels we removed earlier can go back into place on top of the engine nacelles. I can also add the fins which I have assembled and painted off the kit. And just before I put the side decals on, I need to unmask one of these tiny windows per side as the decal goes over the glass. I haven't done the final varnish yet, so the rest of the masks need to stay in place. But once the decals have set up, I can add a final coat of matte varnish and the rest of the masks can finally be taken off. The rear turret will simply slip into place here beneath its fairing. The propellers can go onto the engines now as well. The front gun turret slips into place on the top of the nose, then there's a small fairing part that's added to hold it in place. A quick fit of a few antennas around the fuselage and the kit is done. Now there is quite a lot to do for this kit, but I think it makes a really attractive model when it's finished. So much better than the one I remember from my youth. The only thing I would say is I would have liked some bombs to be included, just like the other bombers in the FX range, and not to have to buy the RAF resupply kit just to get them. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please remember to like it below. And if you haven't already, then do please subscribe to my channel to see other builds and new projects as they're completed. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>